Well, let's see. The standard American um, algorithm for doing this with long division is that I would take the numerator and put it inside, and that I would write the denominator out here on the outside. And then what we do is we ask ourselves, what would I have to multiply that number by to get as close to what I'm looking at inside without going over? And we go digit by digit to make that happen. So if I start with the seven, nine times even just a one is already too big. So there is no number that I can multiply nine by without going over. So instead, I'm gonna look at the first two as a pair. So I wanna get as close to 74 as I can without going over. Nine times what is gonna get me that? I'll take it from the chat. Thank you much. We got an eight in the chat. So nine times eight is 73. So I multiply this down here. I'm gonna write it underneath and I'm gonna subtract it off. 74 minus 73 leaves me with a one. And then I'm gonna bring down this next term. Now I'm looking at the nine and I'm saying nine times what gets me as close to 12 as possible without going over. Oh, 72, someone corrected me. Yes, yes, thank you. Nine times eight is in fact 72, which would make that a two, awesome. So now I'm looking for nine times what gets me close to seven, gets me close to 22 without going over. So I'm gonna multiply two times nine to get the 18. I'm subtracting that off. Hopefully I'll do the arithmetic correctly. 22 minus 18, I think I get a four. And then I would bring down this five and say nine times what? gets me close to 45. Hey, there's a nice number there. Nine times five is going to actually get me 45. So nine times five, I would have 45. I would subtract this, I would get a zero. What that means is that 7,423 divided by nine is equal to 825. I'm gonna do one more example that won't work out quite so nicely. Yeah. You divided 7425. Sorry. Oh, I switched the numbers. Cool. I did switch the numbers. Huh. Okay. Tell you what. Trying to decide how to fix it. I'm gonna fix it like this. I'm gonna fix it like this, we got this. I'm gonna switch that back. Two or three, which is not gonna change anything except that last step. Okay, good thing I told everybody to not take notes. You didn't even have to fix anything on your paper. Okay, I just had to fix something. Great, now that that's a three, nine times what gets me close to 43, but without going over? Four. And nine times four, 36. Now, this actually works out better for me. It's all good. What that means is that 7,423, thank you, divided by nine is equal to 824 plus seven ninths. Now, because 
typically, gosh, when do you learn long division? I don't know, like third or fourth grade? It's been a minute. So once upon a time, you might have had the option to like take the seven and write that as a remainder seven or something. Um, but when long division shows up for us in calculus, it's really important that we're able to write that remainder as a fraction. So we're gonna practice writing that remainder as a fraction, whether we're doing numbers or polynomials. We're not gonna write it as a remainder, the piece that's left over. Okay, I wanna do one with polynomials really quick. So let's say that I've got x squared plus 3x minus 5 divided by x plus 1. This one you're welcome to take notes on. I'm going to set it up the same way where like inside of my bar, I'm going to put the x squared plus 3x minus 5. And out here, I'm going to have x plus 1. When we're looking at polynomial long division, we're kind of following that same process where I'm going to look at what's out front. I'm going to look at that piece that was in our denominator and think, what do I need to multiply by without going over? But the catch is I'm not looking at both the x and the 1 when I'm thinking about that. I'm really just looking at the largest power of x. So I'm going to focus on that x term and say x times what would get me as close to x squared as possible without going over. And that's going to be an x times x. Just like before, when we were talking numbers, I'm going to take that thing and, it, and multiply it by what's out in front. And I'm going to be careful to multiply it by all of what's out in front. So I'm going to have x times x and then x times 1. When we do the subtraction, I choose to put this in parentheses to make sure that I know that I'm subtracting both pieces, not just the x squared part x squared minus x squared gives me zero, and 3x minus x gives me 2x. And then I'm going to bring that term down. x times what was going to get me to 2x? And that's going to have to be a 2. So I've got x plus 2. When I distribute that down, 2 times x gives me 2x, and 2 times 1 gives me 2. And then I'm going to be subtracting the whole thing. So 2x minus 2x is 0. Negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. And when I write this all out, that means x squared plus 3x minus 5 over x plus 1 is equivalent to x plus 2, because I'm grabbing what was on top, plus, as a fraction, that remainder divided by x plus 1. Another equivalent and also correct way to write this would be x plus 2 minus 7 over x plus 1. 3x squared minus x plus 1 and inside, inside, and I've got an x minus 2 outside. So I'm going to focus on that largest power of x out front. So when I'm thinking about x times what is going to get us 3x squared, a bunch of folks as I was walking around had that first step. So this is going to have to be 3x 
because 3x times x would give me the 3x squared. But the thing that we need to be super careful about is when I multiply that down, I've got 3x squared, and I have to remember to multiply the 3x by the negative 2. So 3x times negative 2 is going to give me negative 6x. Next thing to be careful about is just following those signs as we do the subtraction. So 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. Negative x minus negative 6x, that minus a negative, if I were to think about distributing that in, that's really like a plus 6x. So I've got negative 5 plus 6x, sorry, trying to, I was like, my brain was saying the answer. I've got negative x plus 6x, so I'm looking at a plus 5x, and then I can bring that one down. Next round, it's that 5x that I want to focus on. So x times what gets me 5x, and that's going to be a 5. So when I distribute that down, 5 times x, I've got 5x, and 5 times negative 2, I'm looking at negative 10. So when I subtract that, 5x minus 5x is 0, and 1 minus negative 10x, I think is giving me a positive 11. And no one stopped me saying I made arithmetic mistakes, so I'm hoping I did okay. That means that this division is equivalent to 3x plus 5 plus 11 over x minus 2. Oh, I had a question. Yeah. So um, could you walk me through the plus 1 minus 10 part? Because when I did that, I thought it was uh, negative 9. Sure. So the on that last step, really the critical piece here and the one that is a super common um, place for making a mistake is that because I'm subtracting this whole piece, that minus sign is really distributing into both parts. Oh. So I've got like the minus 5x and then minus the negative 10 becomes a positive 10. Yeah. Okay. I see that. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. I flip the page. We just have a few minutes left, but I do want to talk about um, a couple of things that can show up when we're doing long division problems. So if I had, um, let's say I had x squared plus 5, and I was dividing that by x minus 2. When I go to write this out, and I'm putting that x squared plus 5 like inside. We're sort of missing a term. Because I've got an x squared term and I've got just a number, but we're kind of missing a term with an x. So one option for that is to give ourselves a placeholder and call that a 0x plus 5. And the reason that I like to do that is just to make sure that everything lines up correctly when I walk through the algorithm. So I've got, if I'm looking at that x and the x squared, I'm thinking, okay, I need to multiply by x to get x squared. And when I do that, I end up with x squared minus 2x. And if I didn't have that 0x there, if I hadn't given myself the space on top, I'd be trying to subtract 5 minus 2x, and it just gets awkward. So I like to give myself that placeholder. And now when I'm doing the subtraction and being careful about distributing that minus sign, x squared minus x squared is 0. And then distributing that in, it's going to become a plus 2x. And then I could bring the 5 down. So just something to look out for when you're working through the homework. 